Welcome to Clone Questions Live, episode 22, with me, Paul, your clone coach. We are live on Instagram every Friday, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you could catch the live and join the live chat on Instagram every Friday, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. For everybody on Instagram that's joining right now, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Clone Questions Live. We're on episode 22, y'all. Episode 22. Happy Friday to everybody. We're going to get this... Uh, Oh, nice. We got a few announcements, and just as a reminder for everybody, as a reminder for everybody, if you want to ask your question live or join the live chat, um, to me, Genomics, I saw that you joined. If you want to join the live chat, just shoot me a request, and we'll have a little chat live here with everybody. Let me enter a um, the giveaway. Guess a number... From 1 to 420 and 50% off clonecoach.com. Y'all don't forget. Let me enter this comment here and pin it up. Let's see here. Pin this comment. Welcome to everybody joining. I should be able to access the... Uh, the questions from the story, so I'm going to get into that right now. Uh, after a few announcements, a little announcement on clonecoach.com, you can now get uh, or order propagation supplies. So I have an affiliate link set up with uh, Growers House. They're the, one of the best for shipping online orders I've found as far as like shipping costs and um, you know that ease of things. So uh, if you go to clonecoach.com and click on the tab called uh, Propagation Supplies, You'll get um, some some links sent over to growershouse.com, which I have an affiliate code set up with. So if uh, you want to support Clone Coach that way and you're going to be shopping for uh, propagation supplies online, just use that link. It'll help the channel. It'll help me out. It'll help out, it'll help out the whole process here. Um, and as another reminder, don't forget, clonecoach.com is doing 50% off to the end of this month. Um, so we got a little bit of time, but take advantage of that. Clonecoach.com, 50% off everything. And uh, let's see what we got here. As another reminder, if you need testing, uh, pathogen testing for your for your garden, for your plants, head on over to MyFloraDNA and use discount code, guess what? Clonecoach. Use discount code Clonecoach at MyFloraDNA for a discount off of your uh, pathogen testing um, from MyFloraDNA.com. But yeah, y'all, welcome. Happy Friday. I don't have anything rolled up yet. Uh, to be honest with y'all, I was kind of taking a nap before this. <laughs> I was a little, it hit me. Had a long week, long nights, early mornings, and it kind of just caught up with me. So uh, just to be honest with y'all, let's get something rolled up and let's get into another episode of Clone Questions Live. So if you guys want to ask your questions in the chat or request to join the live, that would be even better. It's more interactive. We get a little face-to-face -face time. Um, the last few, few times that uh, it's happened, uh, it's been really, really fun. It's been really fun. So I'm going to get something cooked up here. hope you all have something cooked up, rolled up to, uh, to enjoy on this nice Friday evening and as another reminder let us know in the chat where you're joining in from want to know where you're joining in from in the chat give us a sense of where everybody is in the in the world here it's always fun to to see all the different locations from New Zealand Costa Rica um, you know, Europe, Thailand, uh, everywhere across the United States, Canada, Mexico, all those places. It's always fun. I enjoy it. Gives us a, a it reminds us, reminds me of, uh, you know, the, the scope of things and how people all over the globe are out there trying to make the best clones ever. So please let me know in the chat where you're joining in from, 
If you have any questions, I know we've cut, we're, we're on episode 22, y'all. So we've covered a lot of questions, but so you could get creative with the questions. You could go, you know, talk a little bit more about mothers, nursery operations, my background, um, anything, anything, y'all. You know, it doesn't have to be specifically on, you know, when do I burp my clones? When do I do this with my clones? Obviously, that's big, but we got 22 episodes of this, so there's a lot of information that's already out there. And if you haven't, um, you know, caught up on those full-length episodes, you could go to YouTube and get the full-length episode, and you could do it on uh, Instagram as well. Um, under the series tab, you click that, click Clone Questions Live, and every single episode I've recorded live is on there as well. I remember there was one comment uh, on a reel that I just posted and uh, of, of a flower review for Oak, Oak Fruitland. And uh, one of the first questions was this guy was like, man, do you even do you even smoke, man? There's a lot of fugazis out here. I didn't see you inhale, things like that. And I'm like, you obviously haven't watched Clone Coach very often if you got a question whether I'm a smoker or not. So let's see here. We got some guesses on the chat for the giveaway. Every Friday, every episode, we're doing a giveaway of um, free 14-day uh, quick guide from clonecoach.com. So enter your guess between a number, uh, enter your, your guess of a number between 1 and 420 in the chat live. You got to do this on Instagram, uh, in the chat live. And at the end of the episode, we'll review who got the closest to the random number without going over. And there'll be a winner of the... Uh, 14-day quick guide from clonecoach.com. But we got Richmond, Virginia in the house. Shout out to JB3 Exotics. KB uh, Lauren, Lauren is from uh, Southwest New Mexico. We got Georgia Sanchez from Mexico. We got, uh, let's see here, another question coming in. From Flux Capacitor 81. Says, any suggestions on a light for mom room? Yeah, absolutely. A clap, I mean, if we're not talking LEDs, that's where my head goes to first. Uh, my preferred light for, for mother plants is a ceramic metal highlight or a CMH light fixture. Usually the, um, the dual bulb being the 630 watt fixture um, with the 3K and a 4K bulb in them, a mixed spectrum to get a really full spectrum of light. That's what it's like, what's true to my heart as far as my preferred mother light, mother plant light for the mom room. Um, of course, there's a bunch of LEDs and LEDs are in every garden now. Just be weary of LEDs. Don't go too intense on the wattage um, and on the par. You know, if you go past four or five hundred, you're you're gonna have to really match a high high EC, and you're gonna be dealing with some striping and some purpling uh, more more often than not. Um, so with the LED lights, just just less is more. Less is more for the LED lights. Just FYI, if you're gonna go LED. But if we had a, if you're asking me for my recommendation or my preferred choice, if I had to pick, ceramic metal highlight lights for mother plants good question let's see here let us know where you're joining in from in the chat let us know if you're puffing on anything if you want to join the chat live you will more than likely get a free gift just say everybody that's joined the chat live uh to to ask their question live here on instagram has received a thank you from me just, just throwing that out there. Let's see here. All right, let me catch up on the chat here. Welcome to everybody that's in here. GB3 Exotic says, how much light do you give mothers and what can I do to structure them for cloning? Great question, GB3. So I just touched on what light I, I prefer to give mother plants, which is a ceramic metal highlight uh, lights. That's what my you know preferred choice is for LEDs. Once again, just go you know low and slow, less is more. Don't go too intense on the LEDs um, if you really want to maintain a green canopy. And for the structure, you really want to start 
uh, training that that plant from from clone um, all the way through to a full size production mother plant. You have to train and top and prune and deleaf and shape properly um, with the sole intention of maximizing your clones per square foot. That's is how that's how you really structure them to be a, a production mother plant in my eyes. And that's what my uh, best mother plants ever guide on clonecoach.com really covers. But um, basically, you got to start early. You got to start early and you got to top every top, every branch, every uh, bit that you can as it's developing to really develop a to really maximize your clones per square foot. And that's what I go for 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 mother plants. So if you want to learn more, you want to want to have the whole entire solution, just check out the best mother plants ever SOP on clonecoach.com. Thanks for the question there, JB3. Corey ETH says, welcome back. I remember seeing you on a couple other lives, Corey. Thank you for participating here and joining. Uh, Corey says, favorite flavor from Oak Fruitland? Good question. Um, I'm running through the flavors right now, but I'm really liking this Moon Coin. This Moon Coin. I'll show you this nice side here. But the genetics are Pineapple Pez crossed with Gelato 41. So that is what I'm liking right now. I also had the fortune cookies last time, which I really enjoyed. So I haven't tried all the flavors. There's a lot of flavors to try. But as of now, those are, uh, from what I've tried, I'm really, really liking those. Let's see here. And we're going to get to the questions from the story in a second here. Great White Bud, what's going on? Good evening. Thank you for joining. Real one out there. Followed you for a long time. Huge fan. From Vernon, British Columbia. Great white bud. BC is beautiful. I spent some time in Vancouver for a summer. Hitting, uh, hitting that shop downtown, the, the cannabis shop, and, and burning one there and stuff. So it was, it was really cool out there. Let's see here. Got a question from Hugo Shiglitz, Shiglitz, something like that. Hugo saying, is it better to take cuts from a dry soil plant or one that's well watered? It's a good question. If you're, I, the simple answer is from a well watered plant, not an over watered plant, but a well watered plant. Because if you're cloning from a, a mother plant that is either Underwatered, dry, or overwatered, where your plants are droopy and and kind of really heavily saturated, so the the material is droopy and not praying. Those are two, the two extremes that we want to avoid, basically. So we want something that's that's on a regular watering schedule, and it's not like right after um, being heavily watered from being really dry. We want just something that's been consistently watered that has a solid um, amount of moisture in the in the stems so that you have enough perkiness enough rigidity in the stems to carry on and and keep you going throughout the process if you clone something that's a bit dry already you're you're probably going to have to you're probably going to experience some wilt if that stem is out um out of solution for any period of time really even sometimes just in the workflow that amount of time if your plant already is dry and you take away that little bit of moisture that it does have from this, the plant itself, and you're, it's out in the open, and you're kind of working on them, tending to them, cleaning them up, then you'll probably experience some wilt. So to answer your question there, Hugo, it's, it's better to take uh, cuts from a mother plant that's um, well watered, but not overly watered. So that's that's where you want to be. So we got a flux capacitor from uh, Bing, Binghampton, Binghampton from New York. Great White Bud says, CMH is the bomb. So, such strong plants. Yep. Evolve420 says, I love my CMHs. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Votran24 says, what's up, coach? What's going on? Murray the Mayor says, wish I was smoking. This traffic is trash. You gotta prepare yourself, man. Take something with you and break in case of emergency. <laughs> Let's see here. Welcome to everybody that is joining. Let us know where you're joining in from. If you got any questions, if you want to join the question, the, the if you want to ask your question live, request to join, and you'll get a free thank you from me. 
once uh, uh, on top of a lot of uh, literal thank yous, you'll get a little gift. Let's see here. Beyond Green, Michigan says, Coach, what's up? What's going on, Beyond Green? We've got your guests in there. GB3 Exotic says, thank you, I'm going to get it. GB3, if you want to check out that light, go to clonecoach.com, click the Propagation Supplies tab, and you'll be taken to a few links so you could shop on growershouse.com, um, where I have that affiliate link set up. So um, I found that be, to be the best like shipping cost uh, from a lot of providers out there. So the trays that I recommend or that I like to use, uh, the CMH lights are listed there, Terra Grow is listed there. Um, a lot of good options. So if you want to do some shopping and you want to help and support Clone Coach in the meantime, just check out that link on clonecoach.com, the propagation supplies. Do a little bit of shopping there, and uh, your, your, your coach will get a little kickback to help fund uh, everything we got going on here. Votran24 says, do you see any difference between Lux clone lights and regular lights we get from Amazon? It's a good question, Votron, Votran24. It's a very good question. And the simple answer is not too much of a difference. Like, it is a night and day for me because they're, so, they're, they're both in that low wattage, cool blue spectrum um, range of light to where it's, there's no grave differences. Um, you know, beyond build quality and whatever else that's like the other factors, but they're just the light it's, it, itself and whether the clones um, are really experiencing something, you know, drastically different. I wouldn't say, you know, too much difference there, to be honest. So as long as you're getting a cool blue spectrum, um, you know, same amount of watts, LED, you know, you're, you're, you're close enough to experience, uh, you know, the results that you should be getting from, from either light. Good question there. Let's see here. Scrape border, broader, scrape broader, broader. Says, buying the SOP as soon as I harvest next. Need my clones booming. Everybody needs their clones booming. Everybody. And I can't wait to have you on the team. If you are able to harvest before this month, man, you could enjoy that 50% off clonecoach.com. Just as a reminder but let's see here we got a lot of guesses for the giveaway catching up on the comments here let's see Murray the mayor says how long after flipping the flower can you clone like if you lost a backup to a seed run and don't want to reveg hope my question makes sense Murray the mayor your question does make sense all right the sooner, the better, basically. The sooner, the better. If you aren't able to do so and it's like super late in flower and it's like harvest time, that's when I would suggest, you know, just as to kind of double up and secure and ensure you're going to say the genetic is to like harvest your tops and re-veg that flowering plant and even try to clone some of those branches at the same time and see what takes first to save the genetic. So, but basically, the sooner the better. If if you can't get it to can't get to it soon enough, then I would suggest you uh, you know you, you try to reveg uh, that plant um, because if the genetics that important to you, you could harvest your tops and reflower that genetic, so you don't lose it. Um, you can still clone off that plant and try your to to get, be successful with the flowering you know stems. Um, but as a to ensure you save that genetic, I would just say consider revegging if it's too late. If it's early, then just take the clone and you should be just fine. Flux Capacitor eighty one says I'll be picking up the light and supplies and help support. Thanks, homie. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, guys, I've been trying to see what what's the best option to to provide supplies for you guys right you know whether i'm making my own uh rooting hormone or trying to go private label my own uh, microbes or lights or whatever and um trust me i'm still going to go down that path but in the short term in the mean term meantime you know uh i got to find options for you guys so 
check out the propagation supplies link on clonecoach.com. Let's see here. Okay, uh, Caviar207 says, do you follow VPD under, CM under CMH lights? Yeah, absolutely. Um, still follow the, the, the VPD chart under CMH lights. I think I'm hovering about 1.1 1 .1, uh, on the chart, if that makes sense. So uh, there is a beautiful spectrum of light, a uh, decent amount of warmth, and I believe some UV, if I'm not mistaken, coming out of those uh, 315 watt ceramic metal highlight bulbs. So that gives you great growth in my experience. And yeah, I still, you know, factor in the VPD chart for sure. Murray the Mayor says, thanks coach. You're very welcome, Murray the Mayor. Thanks for asking your question here. We got through the chat questions, which is nice. We're, we're, we're a little caught up on that. So we're gonna dive into the questions from the story. Um, if you guys notice, I'm putting up the story, the questions on my story a day before uh, I go live, because they go, they expire in 24 hours. So basically try to um, post it 24 hours prior so that I'm able to answer them uh, in the live the next day. So if you guys aren't gonna be able to make the live but want your questions answered, just go to my stories the day before, ask your question there, and then catch up on the episode either on YouTube or on Instagram after the fact. And you'll see your question answered. So let's get into it. Let's see what we got here. Questions from Story says, to spray or not to spray the clones? Simple answer is I'm spraying zero tall 2.0 during the rooting process just to prevent any sort of uh, pathogen buildup and keep my stems clean. I'm also dunking them, pre-treating them prior to sticking. So. The only spraying I do during the rooting process is more to uh, suppress and prevent any pathogen growth. Um, you could, if you really wanted to, mix in a foliar spray of like say kelp uh, during this process, but I'm doing that on the mother plants prior to cloning. So I don't really throw that into the rooting process, but if you did, it's really only one spray a week anyways. So it's not gonna be a daily nutrient spray, a daily calcium spray, a daily kelp spray. Um, I reserve that that spraying for the uh, Zero Tall 2.0 just to keep my stems and my nodes and my leaves nice and clean. Nice and clean. So let's get back to these questions here. Questions from the stories. So once again, y'all, if you guys want to ask your questions the day before, just go to the stories and ask your questions there, and I'll get to them on the live here. Let's see here. It says, what is the best way to look at your clones and how to better them when you see them into veg flower? What is the best way to look at me? Reread that. What is the best way to look at your clones and how to better them when you see them into veg flower? Uh, I don't know if I completely understand what you're trying to get through there. I'm not sure who asked that question, but if you're in the chat or if anybody else out there could help me elaborate what that means, what they're trying to ask. Best way to look at your clones and how to better them. If you're worried about your clones, man, just go to clonecoach.com and grab the best clones ever, SOP. <laughs> Boom. Uh, let's see here. Moving on. Question from the stories says, these plugs over there are easy plugs. Well, I'm using them. They quite rock in my opinion. What's yours? So easy plugs are um, a cocoa based plug, a little bit shorter one, a little bit more stout. Um, that's widely used in, in Europe. Uh, I've seen them. I've seen them in person out here. You could get them out here. There's distributors uh, and they look really, really cool. Um, I like them. I haven't used them personally, but if you're using easy plugs, you should be getting some some good results. Uh, but down here, you know, there's other manufacturers that uh, manufacture similar type of, of plugs. I think the biggest difference is that easy plugs are uh, are dry. They're not really pre-moistened uh, as similar to as what most manufacturers out here are doing. So I think that is one of the, the bigger differences where they're they're kind of coming at you more dry more like a like a compressed cocoa type of dry 
Um, I don't know. They don't, I don't think they expand or anything like that. But um, they're coming at you dry versus pre-moistened. Question from the story says, is the sale still going on? I saw you got your processing turned back on. Yes, the sale, the 50% off sale on clunkcoach.com is still going on to the end of this month, June uh, 2023. Just in case you're watching this on YouTube, after the fact, if it's not June 2003, you're a little bit late. But um, yes, we are. There's still the sale going on on clunkcoach.com. Let's see here. Better Meds Quality Cannabis. Shout out to Better Meds. What's going on, girls? Uh, it says, we appreciate all your advice you dropped on us when you toured our facility. My question is, what is your opinion on the Athena Clone Dome? Thanks in advance. My opinion on it is... It makes sense if you're if you're filling up multiple racks of of domes on a consistent basis. Like if you have you know a, a rack of sixteen domes, multiple of those, then I would start to consider it. Um, but even still, in that dome, you are going to experience um, slightly different microclimates uh, from the bottom shelf compared to the top shelf. So. There's going to be some tweaking and some adjusting to do still. I wouldn't say it's a one and done, forget it. Like it traps everything evenly and, and you're good to go. I think there's still a little bit of tweaking to do. And I think it's really only, ideally, if you want to look into it, if you're doing a lot of production, uh, multiple racks, uh, weekly, weekly, weekly. But, you know, in your situation, girls, um, I would not go the Athena clone tent. You go, you girls have a nice section uh, racks for your clones. Um, you know, for the amount of clones you're doing and stuff, you just keep with the domes, and you'll be just fine. You won't, you know, you won't feel the the hurt of working with domes versus the the, the whole clone tent thing. So uh, that's my opinion on it. I think it's 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 meant for people that are doing mass production. Um, and once again, even still, you're going to have some tweaking to do and some adjusting um, and, you know, ensuring everything's at the proper level. But for you ladies, just keep doing the domes. And shout out to Better Meds Quality Cannabis out there in Michigan, uh, pumping out some fire, pumping out some fire, everything, fire flower, fire, fire edibles, fire pens. The, the pen that, that you girls gave me, we're, st we're still puffing on it. Uh, I think we just finished it. And um, one of the best pens I had, and I don't really mess with pens. Uh, so shout out to Better Mids Cannabis for everybody out there in, in Michigan. Give them a shout out. And uh, great, great group of ladies out there. Killing it, working hard, killing it in the garden. Let's see here, Corey ETH says, update on your rooting formula. Are you moving towards a dip and grow product? Good question, Corey. Um, you know, the the answer is really, it's it's still in the works, and I am considering a liquid type of concentrate. Um, that's for, for a few reasons, for the ease of the manufacturing process, the registration process, the, the packaging, uh, all of that stuff. Because with the with the gel, it just takes a little bit more infrastructure for me to house the bulk product, uh, get the machines to be able to fill uh, smaller containers, buy the containers in bulk. Because what I wanted was wasn't really available on the shelves, so uh, that packaging is a bit hard to find. So you know, labeling machines, a bigger warehouse space. So it takes a bit more infrastructure. So, you know, right now I'm, I'm carefully taking those, you know, next steps to say how much of an overhead do I want to take on um, or how nimble do I want the business to be. So, you know, if I'm moving towards a, a product that like the dip and grow product, I could get that prepackaged and kind of um, already ready to, to, to ship or sell without having to get machines and, and bottle it myself and label it myself and all that good stuff. So it's still in the works, but uh, it's it's a it's something that I'm realizing. Hey, it's going to take a little while. This is not you don't bring a new product to market in weeks, um, months, maybe not really. You know, so 
Um, it takes a little bit of time, a lot of consideration, but uh, but thanks for the update there. Um, and I do have some liquid hormone, liquid rudin hormone that um, I'm going to send out samples to as well. So actually, everybody in this live, if you want to try out the the uh, liquid rudin concentrate from Clone Coach, uh, shoot me a an email. Get a hold of me. Shoot me a DM with uh, your your all of your shipping information and um, you know contact information so I could get a, a sample out to you. So thanks for the reminder there, Corey. Um, please reach out to me. Shoot me an email if you'd like, uh, heyclonecoach at gmail.com, or shoot me a DM with your shipping info, and uh, we'll get some liquid concentrate headed out there. It has a few uh, quirks and instructions um, for the liquid concentrate to ensure the the success of, of using that product. So that's what I want to to add to that. So please reach out, and we'll get you some uh, s some samples there. Let's see here. We got a request. Oh, no, we don't. Someone's requesting Mr. C Farms. Let's see here. Usually there's a little delay when I uh, accept somebody. We'll see if you got a good, good, good enough connection to join here. Looks like here. Here it is. Hey, Mr. C Farms. How are you? Excellent, man. You're watching it. You're seeing it. You know, life is good. Right, right. Been a fan uh, since episode one. Been trying to call in since Riverside. So uh, keep it up. I, I love the work, man. Hell, look at that, man. That's 22 episodes ago, man. Now that's uh, I tried the Riverside platform, man. I'm still working on that, but I'm glad we we're able to to get you on here either way. And I appreciate the the perseverance on your end. I appreciate that. I appreciate the support. Truly, truly, I do. Yeah. Uh, question, I guess. Uh, I'm on Spence. Uh, you ever take up off, like, so the main stem that comes out of it? Mm hmm. You know how they have here, demonstration here, purposes. Yeah. So that main stem. This one here is long enough, you know, I don't need a, a clone, you know, that long, of course. But if the clone was, say, like this big, would you do something with this? Would you just chop it off here? Or would you keep this guy and like just cut it up and put that shit in the, in the plug? So great question, dude. Great question. That's what I, I call or consider a cheater clone. So usually when you're, when you're cloning your mother plant, you take those tops. And if you are left with a, a, a growth that's like that, where you just saw the... The wear is cut, and then you have the next node coming out this way, and it's kind of not quite tall enough to stand on its own if you were to chop it there. But if you were to include that little bottom, uh, you know, 90 degree part as well, then it, you could plug that and it'll stand up to be tall enough. That's what I call a cheater clone. And if you're trying to hit numbers or you're trying to, uh, you know, prune out or, or flatten out your mother plant, you could absolutely cut and root that. So that little part at the bottom that, you know, try to get a one or two inches, depending on how the whole size of the clone is. And, uh, you know, 45 that it's usually going to be thicker, like you saw there. So um, either scrape the outer layer and or use a higher concentrate of rooting hormone to penetrate that thicker layer and plug that into your cube. And if you have to tw put it at an angle so the clone stands up straight, do so. And you have yourself you know, another clone. So, 100%, dude. I just call it a cheater clone, basically. Perfect. Yeah, because I was wondering, I was like, because I've done that before uh, a number of times. I've never uh, up the uh, up the rooting uh, hormone, though, because uh, that's, what, that's what I was thinking, too, because they're pretty woody. They're yeah. kind of hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> on, on that note, on, you know, the, the liquid rooting concentrate and, and what you just mentioned now, the, the biggest... Uh, factor with that liquid rooting concentrate is you control the concentration. So if you do have a, a, a material that's more semi-hardwood or even hardwood material, you're going to require a stronger concentration of rooting hormone to have that rooting process be effective. The soft, the soft wood, the real tender, uh, you know, fresh growth doesn't require uh, higher concentrations of rooting hormone because you could easily penetrate those cells. So. 
that's another and that's another plus when i'm realizing with that liquid is that hey if you do have that cheater clone that is thicker compared to the rest of it you can make a stronger concentration and get the success you're looking for yeah hell yeah i appreciate you um shoot shoot me a dm dude shoot me a dm i'm gonna get you uh at least uh the free quick guide or if you got all the guides you need then i'll try to get you uh some merch or something i got it maybe a tray or something i can get to you so maybe you have the the pick of the litter kind of the toy box the toy chest where you got to pick your your gift you know as i remember when we were kids so something like that man uh but please shoot me a dm we'll get you something all right man i appreciate it i appreciate you dude i appreciate you all right man enjoy the rest of your night Hell yeah. See y'all. What do you guys think of that? I think it's fantastic. Let's see here. Let me keep scrolling down the chat. S Tangi87 says, So I've been feeding my clones as recommended. Half strength of the mother plants are getting, and with that, parts my parts per million is still pretty high, and yet I'm still seeing purple stems develop. So, sounds like you're either... You know, took that tidbit from a video, or you may be on the team. I'm not sure, but S Tangi, eighty-seven. The half strength is really intended only for the initial pre-soak. From that point forward, you want to match the the veg food from the mother plants with your clone to experience the same growth. So, eat, so assuming that's the case, and you're still seeing purple, my next question is: Well, is there any purple? Excuse me, on your mother plants. Are they under LED? Are they being underfed? Um, is there any sort of purple on the mother plants? If there is, then don't be surprised when you see purple on your clones, even if you feed the same thing. If your mother plants are solid green, solid green, and you're getting purple, then that's when that uh, lack of food really starts to show itself. So feed the same thing and you should get the same results. Great question there. Great question. And for everybody else that's in here, please let me know where you're joining in from. Don't forget to enter your guests to try to win a free copy of the 14-day of the quick guide from clonecoach.com um, at the end of this episode. Enter your guests in the live chat. The Lake House 716 says, are rooted clones affected by altitude? I've noticed rooted cuts get shocked from fast changing altitude. It's a good question, the Lake House. <laughs> Where I live, I'm below sea level. <laughs> so um, I've never had to deal with any sort of altitude problems, especially putting clones outside in a high altitude location. So I'm sorry I don't have any more insight for you because I'm at the complete opposite. I'm below sea level. And uh, it's a desert out here, so I never really did clones outside anyways. So, but it's very, it's very interesting. Very interesting to it'd be something to to look into. I'm sure there I'm sure there is an effect because of um, like say thinking of VPD like the air pressure, air temperature, leaf surface temperature, uh, maybe intensity of light, maybe the UV is more intense. Um, I'm sure all these other variables are in effect there. So there could be effect with the combination of variables there. It's a good question though. Wonder how high up there you are that uh, you, you see the difference. Here, let's see. We got a question from here. Am I four hundred eight says, if I want to be able to cut say two hundred clones, how many mother plants will I need? It depends how big the mother plants are, but anywhere from the low end of of four, fifty clones each mother plant. Four nice big developed. Uh, mother plants or if they're smaller then you start to increase the number you go from four to say six to say nine to say twelve um, but basically you should be able to achieve 200 clones off of a four by four square um, table with one uh, light you should be able to achieve for uh, 200 clones off of that space so as long as that four by four space is covered um, with the amount of the the proper amount of light and enough foliage to to ensure a nice full canopy and they're trained properly, you should be able to get 200 clones 
off of that 100, off of that uh, one light area from other plants, um, really on a two week basis. So every two weeks. Thanks for the question there. Here, here, I, here am I, 408. Big Mills says, would love some samples. I'm in the UK. Yeah, I don't know about the shipping international. Might be a little tough there. Sorry about that. Let's see here. Let me catch up on the chat. Let me catch up on the chat. See if anything's going on. See, Allen Up North, cheers, 300. Got my clone gel today, and I use it on the tray already. Allen Up North, thank you for your patience, dude. It took me a little while to get your 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 sample out to you, but I got it to you, and I appreciate your, your patience. Let's see here. We got New Zealand in the house, New York in the house. 509 Rasputin says, will being overlit cause purpling? It's a good question and it could 100 percent if you're if you're putting on too much light for the plant and the other parameters uh aren't in play like with the higher ec or even the root zone to 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 uptake and use that you know the lack of foliage for that much light yeah if you have way too much light over over uh over lighting your clones you could cause deficiencies like uh, purpling uh in your clones for sure Buzzy says, New Zealand, Auckland, New Zealand. Nice. Let's see here. Earned D says, you might be shadow banned. I didn't get a notification when you went live. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I am shadow banned. I mean, all of my reels previously for a period of time, about 50% of, of, of the views and interaction and the reach was uh, to non-followers. And now I'm lucky if I get like anything past single digits worth of percentage to non-followers. So, you know, none of my content is getting out there to non-followers. So uh, it's up to you guys to share the profile with your friends and try to help, uh, you know, Clone Coach grow that way. You know, beat the algorithm. We'll just we'll just work our way through that. Let's see here. We got to get back to the questions from the stories. Washington State in the house, nice. Can I can I soar? Is that how you pronounce that there? Can I soar? Here's a question from Pleasant Hollow Gardens. It says you suggest sixty nine percent humidity in the clone room, but if there is no clone room and I have to root in the bedroom. What adjustments are there to make to counter the higher humidity? Your bedroom should have 65 to 69, call it 70% humidity in that bedroom as well. So if you have to root in your in your bedroom, there really is no, no problem. To be honest, it's a benefit because if those mother plants were in that same room, you're cloning from that mother plant, you're putting it through the rooting process by increasing the humidity and the other variables involved with the dome and stuff and uh, the products and whatnot. You're triggering the rooting process um, with the added humidity, the extra humidity, and you're gradually hardening them off and acclimating them back to the same environment that they were growing up in before you cut them. So it's honestly even better to root your clones in the same uh, room that you're vegging or have your mother plants in so there really shouldn't be any adjustments uh, follow the protocols as is and that's how I you know did it did it for years the same room where my plants were where I had my mother plants and my veg plants I had my my domes in the same room you know I never really tried to make a separate room just for my domes I found it to be a bit more difficult to get the climate and the warmth and everything that I that I'm striving for, and I already have that environment in my bedroom, so, you know. Let's see here. Shady Cuts, I, uh, Cuts says, Shady Cuts LG, says, do you pH your foliar spray using RO water? So, 
To be honest, guys, I don't really like to use RO water that much. I like to use a filtered tap or, uh, you know, really good pure water with some minerals in it so you're not too worried about pH and stuff. And if you're only adding one or two products to your, to your water, there's very, very little often that you need to start adjusting the pH really drastically. If you're using RO water, whatever you input into that RO water would, uh, is going to have a bigger effect. So at that point, you may. So always just check your pH. And if you need to adjust, adjust. But know what you're spraying um, because some products just have a higher pH and are uh, better suited to be applied at a higher pH. So you want to make sure that that solution is not very acidic, right? Um, or things that could tend to be acidic, we, we want to make sure we're not adding any opposite spectrums of the pH scale into there. So double check, understand what you're applying to your, your, your solution and what effect um, that has to your pH as well. Buzzy says, bro, you're the man. I'm still learning, but clones is definitely the hardest part. Thanks for all your advice. I love the free guide. Nice. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. If you want to take it one more step further, just grab the 14-day the quick guide. It's a snippet of the 14-day process from the full-length uh, Best Clones Ever guide, and that gets you that's 14 days covered. A lot of people have questions on what to do during this 14 days, and you can get a little snippet for a fraction of the cost. But glad to have you on the on the team there, Buzzy. Buzzy, because it's spelled B-U-Z, or B-U-Z-Z-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y. <laughs> Let's see here. Pleasant Hollow Garden says, thank you. Kind of source says, I have one room for all three stages. It's a little tough. Tough in which way? What's 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 tough about having everything on um on the, on the same room, three stages, your clones, your veg, and your mother plants. What's, what's tough for you there? Busy on your web says on your website. Yep. Clonecoach.com on the digital guides section, you'll see a third option, which is the 14 day quick guide. It's a, you know, budget friendly snippet of the best clones ever SOP. And you get a discount uh, towards the full length SOP as well if you want to you know get the full length afterwards you'll get that what you paid for as a discount towards that uh full length sop so <sighs> buzzy 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 cheers buzzy cz c zups 82 says if you have your clones in your veg room that's running 18 hours on, is it ideal or will it take longer than 24 hours? So let's talk the lighting for sharing the, the clones and the mother plants in the same room. Most people have their mother plants on the 18 hour uh, on, six hour off uh, cycle for their mother plants. And if, and, if, and if on the opposite end of the room, you have clones that uh, are on 24 hours worth of light, some people are like, hey, is that going to interrupt me? I have, a, I have darkness over here. I can't have any light. Look, guys, in the vegetative stage, more light doesn't cause anything but more vegetative growth. You're not causing harm to the mother plants, to the canopy of plants, if there's a little... If there's little uh, uh, ambient light from the other room, the major light source that these plants are getting is gone for them. A little bit of ambient light is not going to interrupt anything or you're going to see any negative effects. And it's not going to trigger flowering. It's going to trigger more veg. So there is no, there is nothing to be scared of when you have your clones on 24 hours a day and your mother's on 18 hours a day in the same room done it for years i've always done it that way there is nothing to be fearful of good question there we got virginia in the house shady cuts ig says rapid rooters versus rock wool what's better or more faster for or more so faster results in your opinion simple answers uh rapid rooters rock wool is a little bit more uh, finicky. You got to have 
the proper pH buffered, you gotta have the moisture levels to play with, um, things like that. So for easy, like just plug it in and forget it, I'm gonna say uh, rapid rooters for sure. So let's catch up to these questions on the stories here. Uh, let's see here. Is the sale still going on? Yes, processing is back on. Let's see here. Question is, can clones damp off from too much cloning gel in the plug? No, not from too much cloning gel, but from too much moisture and a lack of pathogen protection in the plugs. Oh, yeah. If you want to address uh, damping off, go to clonecoach.com. At the bottom, you you could subscribe for a free copy of uh, a free mini guide, a free mini guide that covers damping off. So if you're having issues with damping off, go to clonecoach.com, uh, subscribe at the bottom, and get your free copy of the free mini guide that covers damping off. So I don't from the gel alone, nah. The other factors are going to be much stronger in causing damping off on your clones. Good question. Next question from the stories is, do you prefer to let clones dry out, then water, or always keep somewhat wet for root growth? For clones, there's always some sort of moisture there for the root growth and root growth process. Once they're fully rooted and the domes are off, I mean, I'm, I'm considering that to be back in a vegetative state. So at that point in time, when you fully saturate the cubes, you know, to call it, you know, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, you're probably going to see maybe 10% or so start to be drier than the other ones. So those, if you're going to keep them in those trays, you're going to have to do something to make sure they stay watered throughout. Um, and I have some tips and tricks for that. But generally speaking, during the 14 days, there's always some sort of uh, uh, moisture content. And you really only see a dry back um, before you rewater, you know, day 14, really, and, and, and on. So not really happening during the 14 days. Next question from the story says, even if you make the bad clone vital again, have a great weekend. Uh, you have a great weekend too, first of all. Uh, and your question, how, do you, how even if you make the bad clone vital again? Uh, maybe a little language barrier there, but uh, maybe some more detail will help me out answering that. But I appreciate the question. Let's see, your next question from the story says, taking a bad clone as a new mother is degradation. Isn't the genetic information the same? Sure, internally, DNA-wise, genetic information is the same, but you're, you're basing your mother plant that will propagate room after room after room for you. You're starting that off on a broken foot already. Taking a bad clone, a weak clone, um, to be the heart and soul of your production for all your rooms. So if you're doing that already, what do you expect? You know, so the genetic information sure is the same, but the health and quality of that starting material is the bigger factor here. Questions from the story says, I don't understand the website. So it's $240 for a cloning gel. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, not at all. I don't know how you understood uh, that my guides were uh, cloning gel. There's nothing on there that says, this is cloning gel. You're buying four ounces of cloning gel. Uh, no, that's not the case. The website has digital propagation guides. PDFs, training videos, coaching calls for uh, proper training on your nursery. That's what it's for. So hopefully you revisit the website and get that clarity. Next question from the story says, should I spray the foliage to water my clones or the cubes directly? Thanks. You should water the clones directly to water your clones. Spraying the foliage is either to prevent, suppress pathogens or give them a little nutrient treat, I like to say. So that's really all that the foliage is doing. Um, or so, so for the saturation of your cubes, just water the cubes. You know, fully saturate them, they're watered, done. Moving on. And thank you. Next question from the story says, tips for using domes without vents. Got sent the wrong ones. Good question. 
If you don't have vents, you can't go longer than 24 hours uh, without burping and airing out those those domes. It depends on your environment, depends on your room, your, your environmental parameters. You may need to do that twice a day. But the the no vents, you know, depends how many vents you got going on or how many domes you got going on too. Make some holes in the vent in the in the domes just so you have some sort of uh, escape for the hot, humid air to leave if and when it wants to leave. So, you know, sorry you got sent the wrong ones, but uh, you could still work with it. Just burp more often and, uh, you know, possibly just make some, some of your own holes. Maybe make them, you know, fairly small, maybe the size of your finger or something um, as just like just a standard hole. Make your own if you have to, I guess. Another question from the story says, rock wool or root riots? Root riots would be the simple answer. Next question from stories says, floor flex plug full of white mold. What should I do? All the clones are covered in this mold. So I'm going to make a note to, to dive into the mold on plugs. The mold on plugs. That's going to be something we're going to dive into and make some more content on that. But what you could do as an easy solution is use something like Zero Tall 2.0 um, to, to, to spray and prevent any sort of pathogen uh, suppression. Remember, y'all, so a little bit of mold spraying uh, Zero Tall 2.0 as a mist across the top of your, uh, your, your cubes is going to suppress any sort of pathogen or mold. So that's an easy solution. And when you do your pre-treat, um, you know, biofungicides won't really kill. Um, what's in that cube? So I would just say some zero tall 2.0 uh, would be your best solution there. And lastly, I'm sorry, on that mold, it's not a it's not a negative mold. It's not a a mold that's going to suppress growth on your plants or cause any root rot issues, root pathogen issues. It's a it's actually beneficial. Uh, it's a protectant. You know, if there's if there's good mold present, then the bad mold can't take a hold. So that's a reminder there. Next question from the story says, small fan inside gorilla tent, doing more good than harm? No, you're doing you're doing more good. Uh, small fan inside of a gorilla tent, you're not, you know, putting a Schaefer in there and making a tornado. So airflow is good for your plants. It's, it's necessary for your plants for uh, a lot of reasons. So make sure that every bit of the foliage in your tent is dancing a little bit of movement, uh, you know, constantly and not like getting, you know, bombarded with wind. But just if everything is moving a little bit, there's no stagnant air. That's what you want to go for. So keep the fans going inside your tent. Let's see here. Next question from the story says, uh, besides cold temperatures or high intensity using LEDs, what causes purple stems on mothers? Lack of food, a nutrient deficiency. Um, and on like the pest end of things, something like a root, a root aphid infestation could show, um, deficiency signs in your, your, your growth, purpling stems, uh, uh, wilted down, uh, growth and lack of node development, um, could definitely be shown as, you know, during a heavy root aphid infestation as well. So the other factors besides cold and high intensity LEDs causing purple stems would be nutrient deficiencies and possibly uh, pest pressure like a root aphid infestation um, are going to be the other bigger factors causing purpling on your stems. Um, and assuming that you're not overwatering because if you are overwatering, you're, you're going to experience a lot of nutrient lockout and things like that. So those are kind of the, the main ones that would cause some issues there. Well, that was all the questions from the stories. Let me see, catch up on the chat here. Do like to skate says, do we re-wet rapid rooters, right? Yeah, I, I saturate my media with whatever I'm trying to saturate it with. So I always resaturate everything. Shady Cut says, thank you from NYC Queens. Nice. Uh, Buzzy says, easy plugs, what you think if you know them? They got them here in uh, New Zealand from USA, I believe. Uh, I mean, they may have made a stopover from USA, but they're not uh, manufactured in the USA there. Um, but give them a shot. I I've seen them. I, you know, like the structure of them and stuff. You know, they're 
They're fairly small, so you may have like rapid drybacks if they're fully rooted clones already. So maybe keep an eye out on that. Let's see here. Mo Grown 420 says, so I'm watering my clones new water every day at 6.5, still not having roots and also starting to mold at stems. Mo Grown, you're overwatering every day for your clones? No, you're overwatering. You're getting mold? Of course you are, because you're overwatering, all right? You're overwatering. 6.5 pH for clones, too high. Too high, unless you're doing like soil plugs, not like a cocoa or a peat plug, but like a soil plug. But if you're doing cocoa, peat, or rock wool, or any combination of that, I don't like to go above 6.0. 6.1, sure, send it. 6.5, no thank you. Water every day, no thank you. Especially when I'm seeing mold, no thank you. Mo Green 420, go to clonecoach.com. Do yourself a favor. You won't have any of those problems anymore. Trust me. Mo Grown says again, I'm wanting to get into clones. I'm super new. Would it be better to do a to get a dome and would it would I have to water it every day as well? What would you recommend for a good set of lights? Mo Grown, go to uh, clonecoach.com, go to the propagation supplies and go shopping for a simple tray and dome setup on growershouse.com. Use my affiliate link there. And um, that and the 14 day quick guide from clonecoach.com. Right now it's 50% off. So for 30 bucks, dude, and a tray and a dome. You'll be rocking. Trust me. You'll be rocking. All right? Best way for a newbie just to get started like that. East14HB says, what's up, Clone Coach? New Zealand. We got a lot, a lot of new people from New Zealand over here. What's going on in New Zealand? Clone Coach is out there in New Zealand making it happen, huh? Like to Skate says, when do you take the domes off if they look good, sir? Thank you. Simple answer is at the end of the rooting process, but during the 14 days of the rooting process with the domes, there's a whole process of, of venting, burping, uh, what to do. So if you really want those details, go to clonecoach.com and uh, grab any one of the guides that work best for you, and you'll get those all those answers for you. Kush Kennedy 902 says, I soak some rock wool. I usually soak in Clonix for 24 hours. Will 15 minutes be okay? 24 hours compared to 15 minutes... Kush Kennedy is a big difference, right? Big difference, especially with rock wool. So it may not be enough time to buffer the rock wool media, just FYI. Um, and if you want a little tip, man, I just don't don't soak in Clonex. Just so, soak in the same vegetative nutrients that your mother plants are being fed. Do that and you should be good. But try to get that lower pH for that rock wool to start. And you're looking at a big difference there, so you, you, you may have to uh, adjust. Uh, let's see, Kush Kennedy says, oh well, but my GH rapid rooters dried out. Will that be okay? Re Re-soak them, resaturate, should be fine. If you need to add a wetting agent to increase the effectiveness of the rewatering, the resaturation. Murray the mayor says, why root right over rock wool? Mayor Murray the mayor, it's easier. It's easier. El Jefe MC says, why is it not ideal if I take cuts off of veg plants instead of mother plants? Depends where you're taking the clone off of on the plant itself is the bigger factor. Uh, veg versus mother. Everything's a mother as long as it gives off, you know, material from it. So it depends on where you're taking the clone from, from the bottom side branches. Are you, are you cloning the shit you're throwing away? Is that what you're doing? If you're cloning the shit you're throwing away off your mother plants, off your vegetative plants, then that might be why your clones are suffering. Or saying, oh, well, cloning off of veg plants is worse. You know, well, if you're throwing away, if you're cloning the trash, yeah, it's not the best start, right? So it just depends on the starting material. Not so much whether it's a veg plant uh, instead of what's considered to be a mother plant. Because everything could be a mother plant if it's giving off the, uh, the clones. Terp Surfers says, what's your application rate for Zero Tall 2.0? Listen up. Full strength is one ounce per gallon. Middle strength is 15 mils per gallon. The lowest dose for continuous use for running through your drip line, uh, your drippers and your emitters, is one mil per gallon. One mil, 15 mil, or 30 mil. Those are the three dosage rates. For foliage, 30 mils. For root zone, 15 mils. For consistent use, one mil. 
I'm gonna put that on a shirt or something, dude. <laughs> Let's see here. We got uh thank you for the support there, bu uh, Buzzy. Spreading the word out there in New Zealand. We got Touchdown Tito says, what's up from Louis Louisiana Bis Nursery here in New Orleans. Nice. Touchdown Tito, Louisiana Bis Nursery. I like that. Clever. Rolls off the tongue. If you need any help making maximizing your clones per square foot, your clone production, or making the best clones ever there, go to clonecoach.com. I'd love to have you on the team. We took a vacation in New Orleans once. It's a good time. Good food. Good, good, uh, good culture. Good music. I loved it. A little dirty some places. We got caught in the rain once or twice, but it was it was fantastic. Let's see here. We got two people in New Louisiana there. Love it. Let's see. Touchdown Tito says, "Have you sex sex clones? Flip them the day of plugged." Yeah, I mean most people would would do that. Um, not the day that, that I plugged them. No. I would have to, have to be after the rooted. So, not the day. I don't flip the day of plugging. Haven't done that. Well, y'all. Well, we're a little bit past our time. But there was a lot of good questions this episode. A lot of good questions. This episode 22 of Clone Questions Live. Uh, this has been a really good one. So, now we're on to the section of the show where we're going to do our giveaway. We're going to pick a random number between 1 and 420. So everybody that's in the chat right now, listen up. You in the chat? Hello, hello. Answer your guesses now. I'm going to cut them off and I'm going to scroll my way up. So if you enter your guess too late or after I mention the, the winning number or the number we're trying to get to, uh, it's going to be too late. So enter your guesses now. Number between 1 and 420. Whoever gets closest without going over to the random number will win a free copy of the 14 day quick guide from clonecoach.com. Yep, seeing all these guesses come in. Yep. Like to skate says, Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. I appreciate you. Appreciate the participation, appreciate the, uh, the support. Glad to hear that everybody's getting results out there. If you haven't joined the team and you're making clones, you're messing up. Go to clonecoach.com. Join hundreds of others that are making the best clones ever, the best mother plants ever, uh, all over the world. And for everybody out there that is on the team, don't forget to leave a review on the website. Tell your friends. Let me know your experience. I want to see it. I want to see the pictures. Tag me in your posts. You know, let's see. Let's see the results that are out there. Let's see here. So we're getting all the last guesses in, y'all. Gonna go over here to my random number generator. All right. All right, no more guesses here. No more guesses. No more guesses. OG Rad Backup is your is the last person it looks like. Things done. Let's see here. Random number between 1 and 420. I use a generator, all right? So you guys don't think I'm See the random number generator? Here we go. Oh, this is going to be easy. The number is 52. 52. Who got closest? Without going over. I'm scrolling up. JTOC says, I sent all my buddies your lives trying to get them on the team. I appreciate that, JTOC. Let's go find our winner. Random number is 52. 52 is a random number. Who got closest? Or who? Multiple people. Whoever got closest without going over is going to be the winner of the free a free copy of the 14-day quick guide from clonecoach.com, which is a snippet of the full-length uh, best clones ever guide from clonecoach.com. So let's find our winner. Random number this week is 52. Let me go find my winner. I got 326. Nope. 
some big number guesses out there. I don't think I saw too many low numbers this time, but that's the number. We got 137, nope. 288, 320. Mm -mm. 52 is the number. 165, 411, 420, 111, 300. Let's see here. 42. 42 is the closest so far. 42 is the closest so far to 52. But 52 is our random number. Let's go find our winner here. Scroll into the chat from the bottom, from the newest uh, entries, all the way to the very beginning. And there is quite a bit of chat entries. So there's a lot to go through. 129. Let's see here. Let's see, 357, Magnum, nope, 311, 411, nope, 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 random numbers, 52 this week, 350, 117, nope, 376, nope, 313, 47 is closest so far, that is, I'm keeping notes of who I see that got closest, so it's easier to find after the fact so 47 right now is the closest to 52 which is our random number this week 222 294 uh let's see here 64 nope 62 nope 113 333 321 373 385 a lot of 300s but nope 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 everybody's feeling 300s this time right now 227 Random numbers, 52 this week, 305, 333, a lot of 300s, 419, 222, 48, Whew. 48 is closer. Forty eight is closer so far, let's see, 52 is a random number, getting close to the top here, getting close to the top, getting close to the top, boom, found our winner, GB3 Exotics. Let me scroll down here. Let me scroll down. GB3 Exotics. Your boy TK, I did, you said you won. I didn't see your guest there. And uh, people there are uh, putting after the fact. Big Bones won pretty sure. Which one's Big Bones? Big Bones wins. Let me see. Big Bones. Do, 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 do. Here I am. Your boy TK says, your boy TK says they won. Let me scroll through here again. No, Big Bones, Big Bones got 36. The red, the winning number was 48 by uh, GB3 Exotics to their, that closest to 52, the random number this week. So GB3 Exotics, congratulations. I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you a DM with a discount code for a free copy of the 14-day quick guide from clunkcoach.com. So I appreciate GB3 Exotics. Congratulations to GB3 Exotics. I don't know why you thought 36 won. Sorry, the random number was 52. Closest was 48 without going over. So congratulations to GB3 Exotics for winning uh, this week, episode 22, Clunk Questions Live. Uh, that's going to do it for me, y'all. Once again, if you, if you want to join a team, want to make the best clones ever, go to clonecoach.com. Take advantage of the 50% discount sale that's going on right now uh, to the end of this month. If you need propagation supplies, you could go to the propagation supplies tab on clonecoach.com. If you need plant pathogen testing, go to MyFloraDNA and use discount code CLONECOACH for 10% off your uh, hoplite and viroid and uh, plant pathogen testing services. Uh, everybody needs those. Everybody needs those. So this is a really good episode, y'all. We went a little bit over time, but I loved every minute of it. We had uh, Mr. C uh, C Gardens uh, join the live with the request there. I appreciate uh, that as well. I'm going to be sending uh, him a, a, a little gift as well. So cheers to everybody. I appreciate everybody. If you haven't joined the team, join the team today. For everybody that is on the team, I appreciate you. And uh Glad you're making the best clones ever. And that's going to do it for me. Clone Questions Live, Episode 22. Clone Coach is out. Take it easy, guys.